In this lecture we'll start talking about cardiac arrhythmia. We'll discuss cardiac conduction system, cardiac muscle cell action potential, mechanisms of cardiac arrhythmia, and types of arrhythmia. A cardiac arrhythmia or dysrhythmia is any disturbance that occurs to normal heart rhythm. Cardiac arrhythmias can vary in severity, from an occasional missed beat to serious abnormalities of rate and rhythm that severely impair the pumping ability of the heart and can be rapidly life-threatening. To understand what happens in cardiac arrhythmias, we should know first the normal cardiac conduction system. You know that skeletal muscles need nerve supply, and they must receive a stimulus to contract. In contrast, heart can beat, even without nerve supply. It contains specialized cells that exhibit automaticity, called pacemaker cells. They intrinsically generate rhythmic action potentials in the absence of external stimuli. Normally, the heart beats rhythmically, and this rhythm depends mostly on sinoatrial node, or known as, SAN. SAN is called the pacemaker of the heart, as it is the most rapidly beating part of the heart. So, SAN controls the heart rhythm, and initiates the contraction of the heart. In general, the part discharging at the highest rate, is the pacemaker of the heart. First, impulse starts from sinoatrial node, then travels through atria, producing contraction of the atria. Then it reaches atrioventricular node, then to atrioventricular bundle, then travels through Purkin's fibers in the ventricles, producing contraction of the ventricles. Let's get deeper and talk about cardiac muscle cell action potential. The cell membranes of cardiac muscle cells are polarized at rest which means it has more positive charge outside the membrane, and more negative charge inside. And it is impermeable to sodium, chloride, calcium and potassium ions. Which means, ions need channels in order to pass through the cell membrane. When an electrical impulse is generated by pacemaker cells, a depolarization of cardiac muscle cells occurs. That is accompanied by the opening of sodium, potassium and calcium channels in the cell membrane. This graph represents the change in the membrane potential, over time in milliseconds. And there are four phases. Threshold potential, is the minimum depolarization required to initiate an action potential. Let's start with phase 4. Phase 4 is the resting membrane potential, where sodium, chloride, calcium ions have a higher concentration outside, and potassium has a higher concentration inside the cells. Then phase 0. When there's a stimulus reaches the threshold potential, either it is myogenic or neurogenic, sodium channels open, causing influx of sodium ions, causing rapid depolarization of cell membrane. This creates more positive charge inside the cells, compared to the outside. Also L-type calcium channels open up, leading to a slow influx of calcium ions. Then phase 1, inactivation of sodium channels occurs rapidly, and potassium channels open up leading to efflux of potassium, while calcium channels still open with slow influx of calcium ions. The fast efflux of potassium and slow influx of calcium, makes the inside of the cell more negative, and outside more positive. So leading to a decrease in the potential, as shown in the graph. Till the rate of potassium efflux equals to calcium influx, where it reaches the plateau phase, which is phase 2. Then phase 3. Calcium channels close and rapid outward movement of potassium occurs, making the inside more negative, compared to the outside. That continues, until re-establishing resting membrane potential, which is phase 4. But sodium and potassium ions on the wrong side of the membrane, so active sodium-potassium pump, switches location of ions, and restores normal resting membrane potential. Now let's talk about, mechanisms of cardiac arrhythmia. There are two clearly defined cellular mechanisms, by which a cardiac arrhythmia may arise. These mechanisms involve, ectopic pacemakers, or re-entry impulses. The term ectopic, refers to the occurrence of displaced, or abnormal pacemakers in the heart. Under certain conditions, activity of SAN may be suppressed, and other regions of the myocardium that are capable of automaticity, take over as the primary pacemaker and control the rate and rhythm of the heart. Firing of these ectopic pacemakers, can lead to premature cardiac depolarizations, 
that do not follow the normal conduction system of the heart and that are in conflict with those arising from San. In a normally functioning myocardium, electrical impulses originating in San follow an orderly progression through the conduction system of the atria and ventricles. These depolarization impulses cannot re-enter cardiac tissue that has already been depolarized behind it and terminate after the ventricles are depolarized. In an abnormal myocardium, conditions might exist in which there is an area of slowed electrical conduction, coupled with a one-way conduction block. Because of the slow rate of depolarization, and one-way conduction block, impulse travels in the retrograde direction, and re-enters the conduction pathway, causing an extra or irregular heartbeat. And finally, let's talk about the types of arrhythmia. Let's first have a quick look on the normal electrocardiogram. P wave represents the depolarization of the atria. PQ interval represents the conduction through AV node, bundle of his, bundle branches and Purkinje fibers. QRS complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles. T wave represents the repolarization of ventricles. Note that the repolarization of the atria is lost in the QRS complex. Cardiac arrhythmias can be classified according to the site of origin. Sinus node arrhythmia, originate from sinoatrial node. Atrial arrhythmia, originate from the atria. Ventricular arrhythmia, originate from the ventricles. Sinus rhythm is the normal rhythm of the heart. Originated by San, the original pacemaker of the heart. The normal heart beats from 60 to 100 beats per minute. There are two conditions related to sinus rhythm that may be normal or clinical according to the underlying cause. Sinus bradycardia, when sand fires less than 60 beats per minute, and this is normal during sleep. And sinus tachycardia, when sand fires more than 100 beats per minute, which is normal during physical exercises. Cardiac arrhythmias that originate from other parts of the atria or ventricles are always clinical. We'll briefly discuss the name of the disorder and the symptoms associated with it. First, the conditions of atrial arrhythmia. Premature atrial contractions. Contraction of the heart before the normal contraction. Most occur from ectopic impulses. Also called premature beats or extrasystole. Atrial paroxysmal tachycardia. Sudden increase in atrial contraction rate. To approximately 150 beats per minute. Atrial flutter. Atrial beating rates of approximately 300 beats per minute. Atrial fibrillation. Uncoordinated contraction of atria. Conditions of ventricular arrhythmia. Ventricular premature beats. One of the most common types of arrhythmia. Can progress into ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. Ventricular tachycardia. Excessive ventricular contraction rates can have marked effects on cardiac output. Ventricular fibrillation. The most serious cardiac arrhythmia. Characterized by a complete loss of ventricular coordination. Cardiac output falls to zero. Rapid death will ensue if not treated. Ventricular arrhythmia is much more dangerous than atrial arrhythmia, since the maximum rate, at which the AV node can conduct impulses, is approximately 180 beats per minute. The ventricles are somewhat protected from the high beating rates of the atria during atrial flutter. However, the ventricles are not protected from very high beating rates if the arrhythmia arises in the ventricles. So we can conclude the mechanisms of the drugs that can be used to manage cardiac arrhythmias. They should reduce conduction velocity, increase the refractory period, and extend overall duration of the cardiac action potential or blunt the effects of the sympathetic nervous system on the heart. And that's what we'll talk about in details in the next lecture.